Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hi, this is Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. Exactly what the name of my channel is, is what we do here. And I upload almost every single day because the goal is to save money. And if you are interested in saving money, let's get started, and I'll be back in 30 seconds. Hello again, everyone. This is Jeff from New York City. If you are brand new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a veteran here, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're just stopping by just to say hi, nice to see you. Hey, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to press the notification bell to keep the uploads coming to you on a timely manner. There you go. You know, we have to consider different ways to save money. And it's really a matter of planning, okay? So one of the things that we need to remember to do is if you haven't done so already, is to create a sinking fund. Now, I know it has a negative sound to it, that sinking fund word, but sinking fund basically, it's just a term for funds that you know are going to happen. A separate account for things that you know you're going to be depleting of. For example, we know we have to pay taxes many times, right? So set aside a sinking fund just for that purpose alone, paying your taxes. And that way you're ahead of the game and you started your savings already. It's no big surprise to you. It's like thinking, well, will Christmas really come next year, this year rather, on December 25th? You know it's going to happen, right? So if you know certain things are going to happen, create that sinking fund that you know that you need to take from. If you do not have one already, create one. So that's an important move. Next, do a money review and ask yourself, are there various ways that you can reallocate your funds? Okay. Um, perhaps you might be able to save more, but if you don't ever examine what you have, you'll never know that. That's why it's very important to check what you have. And in big ways with money and even in small ways in the home or apartment that you live in. And I'll talk more about that later. So do a money review every now and again. Okay. That's important. Think of money as small little raindrops. Okay. Some people can't fathom the idea of savings because they think grandiose at the beginning and it just like sort of gets overwhelming and the person backs off. No, no. Let's think of a rain barrel, for example. A rain barrel collects raindrops one tiny drop at a time. Okay. It's not coming in gushes. Even the biggest storm doesn't necessarily come down in gushes. You know what I'm trying to say? So if you find a quarter in the street, put it in your pocket, take it home, throw it in the change jar. Do these little things, whether it's a quarter, a nickel, a dime, a dollar on those lucky days, a $5 bill, put those little raindrops into your imaginary rain barrel and collect little things and up, you would be amazed. You would be amazed. So think of the small changes like that rain barrel. It slowly collects the water and uh, drop by drop, there you go. So it's not just a nickel. It's not just a penny. Maybe it is while it's by itself standing alone, but putting it together, it creates somewhat of a fund, okay? There you go. Uh, be mindful of having multiple streams of income. Think of something, if you only have one income, okay, and the day comes that unexpectedly something happens like job loss, let's say you have one job and that's your only source of income. We don't know when that could happen. That company could fold, okay? I'm sure recent events have taught many this unfortunate experience. Therefore, let's learn from the past and take the best from it. Take the best from the worst of something, okay? Take the best from the worst of something. We learned that it's really a much smarter and better idea and safer idea for our futures to have multiple streams of income, okay? 
very, very important. Now let's just jump into rotisserie chickens. What? From that to rotisserie chicken? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> a rotisserie chicken is a food investment in so many ways. Well, the first time around you get it, you're not cooking that night, for example. Just saying, just saying. If you go to certain stores after a certain hour, you could get the rotisserie chicken sometimes half price or two for one. Hello. So it's already done up. Okay. That's bonus number one for that first night. Then whatever's left, you debone it, you clean the meat, pack up the meat, pack them in little packs in the freezer, put it away. You think you're done? No. Take that carcass, take the bones, make a bone soup from it, and you'll have even more value. What a value. I do believe in rotisserie chickens being a savings, so there. <laughs> just make the most of it. And, you know, it really kind of sort of just goes back to the idea of making the most of what you have. How very, very important. Speaking of food, consider making a meatloaf once or twice a month if your family enjoys it. Once every two weeks would be cool. Meatloaf is so comforting. It's so simple. Um, plump it up and fortify it with oats, okay? Not, not a ton of oats, like maybe like a, a half a cup or a cup. You know, it depends on how much meat you're using. What I like to do, uh, I do the oats. I like parm cheese in there. I like my favorite spices in there. I like to use Italian seasoning in there. I also like to use one four, four ounces of tomato sauce in there with one egg, okay? And it really binds it together. I like to put the whole thing in a loaf pan. You know, like the same loaf pan actually that I would use to make um, an oat bread, for example. Put that in the loaf pan. I like to bake that off at 350 for about 40 minutes. Depends on your oven, so check. Why do I do it that way? Well, it's a loaf, right? Meatloaf. But also because during the week, I could slice that down and easily make a quick sandwich for either lunch or dinner. That with a salad and fruit, you are good to go. Meals do not have to be fancy to be nutritious. They do not have to be expensive to be nutritious. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, get to know your stuff a little better. What do I mean by that? The stuff in your home or apartment. There are so many boxes and bags that... We forget sometimes inadvertently. We all live busy lives. Sometimes we forget to label them. And it's just like boxes in a closet. And you're like, it's taking up space. What's in there? Look in those mystery boxes and address it. Just sort it out. Give away to bless someone else. Sell to help your own income if you need to and want to. And uh, some just have to go. Just like they just, they, they're not good for blessing someone else with. And they're neither sale worthy. So sometimes you just have to pitch it, but make that determination. And you just freed up a whole bunch of closet space real estate. Why not, right? Okay. Um, designate a tiny amount of time uh, once a week. It could be an hour to just slicing, dicing, chopping, prepping. And uh, go to the How Debbie Saves channel for, you know, really, really cool examples of you know, meal prepping, food prepping, that's the place to go for stuff like that. How Debbie saves. And she is awesome. As are so many other of our fellow tubers with so much information on this platform. So do your research. <laughs> um, okay. Once in a while, you know, take advantage. There are certain times when actual real pizza pizza from the pizzeria, you know, pizza type place. Look for steals and deals. There are definitely certain days of the week. Check your local area where it pays to get takeout. I heard of someone that picked up like a huge Sicilian style pie for like $5. And they not only enjoyed it with the family, the initial night, that person had it for like a couple of days and you can always freeze it and reheat it up. And by the way, reheating your pizza in the air fryer makes it practically like the same day that you bought it. Give that a whirl in case you have not tried that yet. And last of all for now, turn your hobby, the thing that you love to do, into an income stream, into something that's paying you. It may not pay you a gazillion, 
But remember multiple streams I mentioned before? That could be one of your multiple streams. What, what do you love to do? Do you love to take pictures? Are you really, really good at it? You have like a passion for it? Perhaps you could, you know, advertise your skills, show your stuff, and maybe work for an event like weddings, parties, communions, all these special occasions, birthdays, you know, anniversaries. The sky is the limit. If this is your talent, are you good at baking? My sister is fantastic at baking. She really, really is. And uh, at one point she turned that into a side hustle and it earned her some money and she got through graduate school from doing that side hustle. So uh, turn that hobby, the thing you love into something. Start a YouTube channel if you're sort of like a person that likes to share information. I'm a former teacher, I like to share information. I'm a communicator, I used to do radio. I like to talk, but I also like to give good content and help people at the same time. So for me, this is something I do. Started off as a hobby, but now I work you know, with the partner program. So now you'll see commercial ads on here and thank you so much for them. <laughs> um, but this is something that you can do. Will it happen overnight? Absolutely not. By the way, I'm gonna be slightly braggadocious on this. I am almost at the 700 video mark. And when I hit number 700, I should do a show dedicating to that. I think I will. So there. All right. Well, I know that these tips are going to help you. And I want to wish everyone a wonderful day. Tonight, I'm going to be recording a show with Debbie from the How Debbie Saves channel that will be uploaded tomorrow. I cannot wait to see her tonight. She's going to be talking about a side business that she is starting, has started rather, and we'll go into it. And maybe this is something for you to consider to check out. So hopefully tomorrow you'll get to see it. I really, really hope that you do. We all love Debbie. She's absolutely wonderful and she shares so much of her knowledge. So there. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I look forward to seeing everybody again when? Real soon. Have a great, great day.